Hey everyone, it's Rhonda here from Nelson Soapery. As we are in summer in Australia at the moment, I thought let's get into a video on how I actually make my bath bombs in summer because the recipe will change um, for summer. So anyway, let's get into this. I'm going to be making my Lily Moss uh, bath bombs. And of course, I'm going to be using my traditional mold that I usually use, which is just a small one um, through the Express bath bomb machine. And then I've got, a, of course, I've got a hand press. So in my container here, I already do have my bicarbonate soda. We're going to be using two kilograms. Make sure your mixture is right on two kilograms, not under, not over. Um, because that way this will make it easier. I definitely do not suggest that you use um, rubbing alcohol or isopropyl during summer because of course it's hot and it can evaporate much faster. So I do suggest you use an oil water um, recipe which I'm going to use now. So anyway let's get started and I'll show you exactly how I'm doing it. So in my container as I said we do have our bicarbonate soda which I have sifted through and as I said, it's 2,000 grams or, of course, 2 kilograms. So it's feeling really gorgeous, no lumps, and that's what we definitely need. So before we get the colours and mix all of that, we're going to put all the dry ingredients inside. So like I said, we've got the bicarb to start with. Uh, to the side here, I have my massive bag of kaolin clay. I do buy the kaolin clay in 5 kilo lots. Uh, this one came from heirloom um, so you can definitely go on to heirloom and find it and now what we're going to be adding in this is we're going to be adding in two tablespoons of kaolin clay this little one i'm using is only a half tablespoon so that's why i'm putting four but that does equal like i said two tablespoons kaolin clay will also help to harden it up if you've run out of cream of tartar but you do need a lot of kaolin clay um, so anyway like i said so we've added in our kaolin clay so let me pop this one back so now with this particular mixture what i actually have is two separate colors one is green and one is purple and of course we need to add the different dyes in don't we so I have got my mixed dye in here, but we're not going to add that in yet. I just thought I'd talk about that. And then I'm also going to pop in, of course, um, some mica. Mica actually helps keep colour because as we all know, these dyes, as gorgeous as they are, they do not hold their colour in the sun. So if you've got a shop and it's in the sun or something like that, you need to add some mica. So we're going to add one tablespoon of mica into this. As I said, this is only a half one. So, so we'll just add that in. And that way, if the colour uh, goes away, we're not going to be stressed. Also in these, we are going to be adding in some embeds. So I've just got these little embeds. You can just make them. You don't have to cut them perfect. These ones I just made in a slab and just sort of chunked off pieces to go in the middle. So for now, like I said, we've got the cream of tartar. We've, uh, sorry, we haven't put the cream of tartar in. We'll get that now. So cream of tartar, kaolin clay, bicarbonate soda, and then our mica. And of course, later on, we will add the citric acid, but always do that at the end. I definitely made that mistake uh, when I was first learning never to do that, but definitely add that at the end. So we're gonna add two tablespoons of cream of tartar. So let's get that. Cream of tartar is really, really good because this helps harden your bath bombs. My bath bombs, honestly, are hard within two hours. Um, but you know don't pack them straight away because if you actually pack them straight away what happens is you might see little wet spots through the plastic and that's because the inner part of it hasn't had time to dry enough so just leave it 24 hours and then you can pack them up all right like I said we've got that and now we're going to add some SLSA if you don't want to add it you definitely don't have to it will not alter the recipe and I will show you the smallest amount that I put in mine. This is the SLSA. It is very airborne. I only put in that much. So it's half a teaspoon. It's the smallest, smallest amount. Because if you have too much SLSA, what can actually happen is you get all the foam and no fizz. And lots of people say to me, your bath bombs fizz so much. And yes, they do because I don't have a lot of SLSA because that does stop the fizzing uh so yeah so that's definitely something um i would say you know that is the is the thing don't add a lot of it definitely don't and if we're talking on a business perspective as well adding lots and lots of um slsa adds a lot of money too because it's very expensive so um you know and bath bombs aren't cheap even though we only sell them for five to eight dollars each 
they're really expensive to make. What I'm going to do is I'm just popping this onto my mixer, which is a side. Uh, so I've got a stand mixer, but you don't have to. You can do this by hand if you want. So like I said, here's my stand mixer here. I'm going to mix this for about three minutes just to make sure it's really well combined. And then we're going to mix in our colours and our oils after that. So let's do the liquid part. So we just have a cup. You can use whatever you like. And then, of course, we are going to be mixing in everything here. So I'm going to keep to one tablespoon of jojoba oil. As I said, remember, this is a half spoon I'm using uh, because the others are all in the wash because I've been making hundreds of bath bombs today. So now this one is the poly sorbet 80. We want one and a half tablespoons of poly sorbet 80. You definitely do not leave this out. If you do, you'll get stains on somebody's bath. It's really important um, because I'm adding mica in. But even if you don't, it still does help disperse things. So, And then we need to add three tablespoons of apricot kernel. So obviously I'm going to add six bits in here because, as I said, this is a half spoon. So we've got our six in there. So you can see that that's nice and full. So like I said, so it's three tablespoons of apricot kernel, one and a half of polysorbate 80, and then we've got one of um, uh, jojoba oil. And of course, we are going to be adding in our fragrance into this. If you're using essential oils, remember that your fragrance would usually be two tablespoons. So you're going to have to combat that with um, adding something. So if you're going to be adding in um, essential oils, I suggest that those two tablespoons you usually would use uh, with your fragrance oil, just change that to an oil. So just put olive oil or whatever you want to put in, um, you know, sweet almond, whatever you want to put in, but just and mix the essential oils with that oil because that way you haven't lost that particular fattiness of the oil because you need that to keep this recipe moist and stop it from cracking. So we've done that and now what we're going to do is of course we need to add in our fragrance oil so I'll grab that. So the one I'm going to be adding is this one here um, which I really do love this one. This is my Lily Moss um, one and it's a very big seller for me. Um, but as many of you know, it's not about the fragrance oil. It's about the look of the bath bomb. So we've got this one. So we're going to add that straight into our mixer. Now let's mix this around and we're going to leave this on for about two minutes. And in the meantime, I will organize the second color. So let's go. Now let's add in the colour and yes, I dropped all of the purple for my other colour. But anyway, inside the, this little bit here, I've already mixed one, uh, sorry, half a teaspoon um, with my uh, water. And then I'm going to add this in to this mixture as well because we want to dye it with this colour, don't we? We don't want to just depend on the mica. So we'll pop it in and we will make sure we um, empty everything out and make it gorgeous. And... Um, I will show you what it's going to look like in just a minute. So in here, you'll be able to see this is the colour that it would be with just the mica, which is this particular colour. But we want this to get brighter, so I've added in the teal. So we'll pop this down and see what happens. So now I've got my citric acid here. It is one kilo, so let's just pop that in here and uh, we will see how it's going to go. I'm getting everything ready I thought I would actually talk about a couple things so in here is my purple that we have already done um, like I said I've done it exactly the same as the green I probably did these ones a bit too bright for what I usually like but you know it is what it is isn't it so <laughs> I can't change it but they will look gorgeous the thing is I like mine to look more muted colors but uh, you've got to remember with these dyes, they will dull down. The dye is not going to stay as bright as it looks now. Once it dries, it will look lighter. So if you want a bright one, you definitely need to add the teaspoon. Um, but you could add half a teaspoon, quarter of a teaspoon of dye, whatever you like. Just get the colour you want and play around with the colour. Now also, when we were talking about uh, fragrances... For me, you know, I get lots of people say, oh, your bath bombs, the smell is so good. Most times I don't get them that strong. 
the thing is that the fragrances I use are a higher blend. There's different qualities of blends. So, for instance, that fragrance I showed you, that's $50 a bottle. I think it's like $49 or $48 or something a bottle. So it's really, really expensive. So that's the thing that I was going to say as well. You know, you get what you pay for, you really do. So if you want a really good quality one, um, you just need to pay for it. Um, and you don't need that much in bath bombs anyway. But for these, what we're going to do is to do two multicolours. And I'm also going to put a little bit of corn flour in the bottom just to make it look a bit pretty. So I'll just get that. Um, corn flowers. I get these from a place called um, String and Salt. And String and Salt is in uh, Warrigal where I live. It's actually a little kitchen place, but they sell all their little herbs because they make teas. So we're just going to put a tiny bit in the bottom like this. And then all we're going to do is basically just go from one colour to the next. If you don't want to muddle up your colours, definitely put a spoon in and just get a spoon of each. Um, often I use this, so I'll put that in the middle and so on. But there is a trick to make it look pretty. So when you've got it like that, put your hand in. And if you kind of squish and see that mark, and then the next colour that we're going to put in will fall into those little holes. Um, so that is definitely a thing to do. And squish the top again, and then the purple is going to fall into those little holes. So hopefully that makes sense to everybody because um, I know for myself, um, I used to try and do all these different things and think, why isn't this working? But anyway, I thought, look, we'll just talk about that. So we'll pop the lid on squish this down and this will be my first tester because i haven't weighed this one but all of mine get weighed every single one that i use um gets weighed now i do have a little push out thing but of course i can't find it so i'm just going to do this because i have the two colors i'm not going to shake it over the top i will shake it over the bench and i'll just wipe the bench down later and then just wipe around the edges to get that and then that is your satin ring so this is, uh, we'll see what happens, won't we? So I open it up. It's looking gorgeous. And I always say this to everybody, bicarbonate sodas and citric acids are not the same grade. I use an expensive grade, which is from N Essentials, and it is more expensive, 100% it is. But the grade is really amazing. So I definitely... Um, do support them because I know that the quality is amazing. So anyway, we'll turn it around and look how gorgeous that looks. So you'll be able to see how cute that looks. It's looking really gorgeous, isn't it? So we'll put this on the drying rack. I'll get going because I have to make a hundred of these. I hope you have loved this. I'm going to bring you back at the end and I will show you um, once they're all made. I'll give you a bit of a look. But yeah, and then I just literally pop them down on a tray. I only use a cake pop tray at the moment or a cupcake tray that's lined with um, glad wrap or plastic. But, you know, if you can get the proper trays, as I said a while ago, my husband is um, doing some prototypes to make some, but that's going to be a little while off. So, because it takes a long time to get something like that perfect. But anyway, we'll put this on the tray and I'll bring you back. Here you go, everybody. We have finished. I hope you love them all as much as I do. And they smell absolutely gorgeous. They are scented with like an orchid type scent with lilies of the valley and lots and lots of gorgeous, sweet smelling florals. But there they are. They'll sit here for a day or so before I wrap them up and then they'll be out on my website. See you next time, everyone. Thanks for listening.